Hello, my creative friends. Meg's here. How's everyone doing? I hope you're all doing well. So I wanted to come to you today with some watercolors, my favorite thing in the whole world. So if you don't know already, um, I'm very late to the game, but it is World Watercolor Month. And although I'm not I don't consider myself a watercolor artist by any means. I am very obsessed with watercolors. I have just a special place in my heart for watercolors. They call my name and I'm finally, finally dipping my toes into actually learning the medium, um, you know, by taking some online classes and things like that. But I've been collecting watercolors in hopes of becoming a watercolor artist one day. <laughs> I've been collecting these for years. So this is my Daniel Smith collection. I thought I would go through it and show you guys. Um, I have some swatches to share with you. I want to show you my palette setup at the moment and what my plans are with that in the future. Um, I also have this little 66 dot chart which I started and then I stopped because I was busy doing something else and I thought well maybe we could just swatch the rest if you guys are interested in that um, depending on the time so I was going to show you the cards I have set up and um, go through the pigments that I have the names and what pigments in them and yeah we'll just get on with that and then depending on the time we could swatch the rest of that dot chart um, and yeah, so I hope that you will stick around and see what I have to show you today. So, like I said, um, oh, also World Watercolor Month. Like I said, I'm late to the game with that. If you are here um, as one of my sweet friends that love to watch and you don't know much about watercolors, I have a lot of journaling friends and colorists that um, like color and coloring books and maybe you don't know about watercolors. Um, so, World Watercolor Month is something that I didn't know about until this year. I'm going to actually just leave a link below and you can look up the information on it because I my videos tend to be long and as you know, or maybe you don't, I do not edit <laughs> and so I'm trying not to take too much longer on my videos. But basically, it is um, a, a month that is finally dedicated to watercolors, like actually on the calendar it's recognized as World Watercolor Month, and basically um, there's prompts that you can follow, you don't have to, but you can follow the prompts, and if whatever you post to social media, you hashtag it World Watercolor Month, and you can do anything in watercolor or gouache, gouache counts as well, um, but yeah, that's just like, it's all for a good cause, it's just to, um, to really bring art to life and, and creating um, with watercolor medium. So there's more to it than that. There's also like um, a nonprofit thing, I think. I think. I wish I would have wrote it all down. <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, but there's like a really good cause uh, for kids and stuff like that. So go look it up. I'm sorry if I butchered that. <laughs> I, yeah, I really am. I wasn't even going to mention it. And then I'm like, you know what? That's what I'm doing this for. So yeah, duh, mention it. So please go look at the links below. Um, yes. So these, this is my Daniel Smith collection. This is what it looks like. This is how I have it set up. So let me just go through this. This is just an old, uh, this is a tin that was for pencils. And I just put my watercolors in them. Um, so I have 55 colors of Daniel Smith watercolor that I've collected over the years. Like I said, these are the small tubes. And then two whites. So I have 57 colors, or 57 paints. Um, so this is how I have them all set up. And then I have some down here. Some of There's a few in here that are not Daniel Smith, that are um, Windsor and Newton. And the reason I put them all in here for it right now is while I'm learning watercolor and working in my sketchbooks and what, doing these little classes and things. I want to know what colors I'm I'm liking, what colors I'm leaning towards, what am I going to use more, and I'm actually almost ready to refine my palette probably this week. I'm going to get a palette that holds, <laughs> I, I'm pretty sure it's still going to have a lot of paints in it, but like I don't need all of these yellows. I definitely don't need all of these reds and pinks. You know, I need to take a few out because the bigger your palette is, well for me, the bigger, I, the more colors I have, the more confused I get as you know when I'm about to mix a color or something I'm like oh great what is this uh, what what red am I gonna mix what am I you know so if I refine it and I take it down a notch I will only have a few to choose from and I'll know faster what I want to use you know easier 
But for now, as I was learning and getting comfortable, and as I am learning and getting comfortable, because I am still learning, I, I do have them all in here for now. So that's how I have it set up, and this is just a really good way um, to reuse tins, like when I take my pencils out, if you have a pencil tin, this is a Winsor & Newton tin, um, and put them in a pencil case. You know, sometimes we have these sitting around, and um, I just put little magnets underneath, and they stay very secure in there, so there we go. <laughs> I could not have planned that out if I wanted to. That, could, that was like right on cue for disaster number one. I'm sure we're going to have more disasters than that, so oh my gosh. So yeah, as I throw my paints around, um, yeah, so let's continue, and let me make sure I'm in frame. Okay, so this is how I had my chart set up. You know, my son drew all over it, and so it is very messy. I actually um, w went in here and went over a couple colors because I thought I had them named wrong, so, so I had to do a new chart. This is not a nice chart. Um, but this is what I used for a long time. Um, it has all the, the names of the colors and stuff like that. So I thought it would be cool to use the paper that I... Um, usually used for uh, watercolor and that is arches. I like the arches paper. I really like using this block um, because you know your paper is glued down and it's not you know it helps it helps you not have to like tape it down and stuff like that when you're watercoloring and then you just take a little palette knife like this and then take it out so when you're all done. So I love arches. I know it's not the best in the world, but it is a really, really great paper for me. I'm comfortable with it. I like it. And um, so that's what I use there. And um, as far as brushes goes, um, I was going to have a separate video for that, but I will tell you some of my favorite brushes. If you are on a budget, these Grace Art Practice brushes, oh my gosh, they're called Grace Art Practice. I'm going to try to link all this stuff below. Um, for Amazon. These are cheap. I mean, you, you get a whole package. I don't even know how many is in there, but like 10 probably or more. And you get a whole bunch of the flat brushes and round brushes as well, and in all different sizes, and it's like $8. And it's they're amazing. They're amazing. Um, but I really love, for like a fancier brush, I think my um, Aqua Elite Princeton brushes are probably my favorite. So I really love these brushes. I have a few different sizes because I do have a lot of brushes and that's because I am a hoarder and a collector and I love supplies but also because I got these for great deals over the years. Like I said I've been collecting these for years as well or maybe I didn't say that. It's been taking me years to get all this stuff. Um, but you definitely don't need all of these <laughs> at all. A good round brush I would say if you're new um, I would get a smaller round brush, personally, this is personal, like I said, I, I don't have all the answers, but um, I would get like a small round brush, um, a size 8 or a 6, and the numbers are not the same across the board for each brand, so you have to look at that yourself, but um, a nice big brush for a wash, maybe a flat brush, I really like this one right here, it's a 1 inch Grumbacher, so if you want to wet your paper for a wet on wet, I love this brush right here. And then I really love my number 10, Aqua Elite, but I also love the smaller version, the 6. So I would say a 6 and a 10, or an 8 and a 12, or a 6 and a 12. You know, like a big one, a small one, and a couple of square brushes. I also like having a smaller square brush, because um, I like to do smaller trees lately, um, and I, I like to use like a half inch too. So maybe an inch and a half inch square. Um, just depends on what you want to paint. So I really couldn't tell you what is good for you. That's just what I use. Uh, I did hear that this was a great brush, this Da Vinci Cosmotop Spin. I paid a lot of money for this, to be honest with you, and it says that it's a pointy brush when you go online and this and that, and it just, it is, I guess, but I just... It doesn't look like it. What I'm trying to say is when you for when you get it, it does not look pointy. When you wet it, it does come to a bit of a point. But it's just not as great 
to me is what I thought it was going to be. I really think the Aqua Elite is um, a better choice. I think it's a little cheaper. I also think that this has natural hairs in it, I think. I think it's a mix. They might both be mixes, but I don't know. Anyways, <laughs> I'm not very full of answers with that, am I? Let's get to what we're here for in the Daniel Smith colors. I already have them swatched out. I was going to swatch them with you guys, but that takes hours. It really does take hours to swatch. So I'm going to go through, oh, I'm going to go through the colors. And what I really want to say off the bat, another thing, is when you're, my handwriting's horrible. These are not great glazes. This is not beautiful swatch time. It's just big enough for you to see the color. And yes, I messed up on a lot of these. Don't judge me. This isn't how I paint. It, you know, they're not great. Okay, let me just get that out there, because there's always somebody who's got to be negative. <laughs> Anyways, so um, I really found out that the hard way that um, you can't just go by, if you're going to mix your brands, you can't just go by the name of the color on the tube. You have to go by the pigments, what is in the color, because when you buy a student, especially in student grade, you'll find that um, like for instance a cobalt blue I, I bought a student grade um, a cobalt blue and it was actually it said cobalt blue but it actually had the pigment that most ultramarines have PB29 so it wasn't what I thought was a cobalt blue you know it was actually a French ultramarine or an ultramarine blue so don't go out by the names, especially if you're doing student grade. I would go look at the pigments and make a swatch. It's important to swatch, especially because the paints dry differently than what they come out looking like. Um, and then, um, you know, you should write. What I did is I put gra a space for granulating. I want to know if it's granulating or not. Um, I did do little the little um, triangle here is if it's transparent, opaque, or semi-transparent. Um, and then down at the bottom, it, the bigger space at the bottom is the pigment numbers because that's what I'm trying to memorize so I can be um, efficient and, and know what pigments are and what, what they're usually in, what pigments are in what colors usually. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Hopefully that made sense and came out okay. So don't they just look so pretty sitting there? <laughs> okay, so the first color is Buff Titan, which is PW61, and that is a white pigment, PW6. Um, yeah. And so the second one is Bismuth Yellow, and that's PY184. The star at the bottom also is Light Fast. So this is light fast according to what the company says. Now, I'm not going to get all into that, but I will say in a nutshell, look at, if you really want to learn about watercolors, obviously look at somebody's channel that is proficient and professional in watercolors. I can link some below, um, some very smart, amazing artists that know what they're talking about. But you will come to find out when you start watching these videos that um, you know, the company doesn't have to tell you the truth, basically. <laughs> they might say something's very light fast, and it may fade in a week, you know, if it's, uh, you know, facing the sun or whatever. But I just put the star down, um, one being proficient, or one, excuse me, one being excellent, and then it goes to one, two, three, and then F means fugitive. And if you don't know what fugitive means, that just means that it's not light fast at all. And this is just, like I said, according to what is on the paint tube itself, not I didn't do my own test. So so don't yell at me if you <laughs> if you think something is light fast and you find out it's not because of what I say. Um, you have to do your own testing, okay? Um, so Bismuth Yellow is PY184. Hansa Yellow Light is PY3. Cobalt Yellow is PY40. Lemon Yellow is PY175. New Gamboge is PY97 and PY110. The second swatch I have is Perinone Orange is PO43. Tran Transpyrol Orange is PO71. Quinacridone Coral, PR209. Pyrol Scarlet, PR255. Quin Red, PV19. 
Alizarin Crimson, PR83. Aren't those beautiful? I mean, I swatched them horribly, but they are beautiful colors. Oh, I was having such a hard time with... My kids were in here jumping on me. It was awful. Um, permanent Alizarin Crimson is PR177, PV19, and PR149. Opera Pink is PR122. It's very fugitive. Quinacridone Pink is PV42. Quinacridone Rose, PV19. Rhodonite Genuine is Genuine Rhodonite. Um, it doesn't have pigment in it. We did find out recently that according to um, a leak from Daniel Smith's company, they said that Daniel Smith's been lying and their uh, Primatech line is not actual, um, it, that they ha actually have pigments in them, that they're not just the genuine stones. I don't know, that's just what I heard, but I wrote what's on the tube, so... It doesn't matter much to me. I'm not making masterpieces, but if that matters to you, you might want to look into it. Um, Quinacridone Magenta is PR202. And that's what those look like. Oops. The next is Quinacridone Purple, PV55. Ultramarine Violet, PV15. Amethyst Genuine, Genuine Amethyst. Carbazole Violet is PV23RS, red shade that is, so uh, pigment violet 23 red shade. Moon Glow is PG18, PB29, PR177. I think, if I'm not mistaken, that might be one. It says that it's excellent, excellent light fast, but I heard that it's very, very bad. Unless I wrote that wrong. I might have, I don't know. Let's look up Moon Glow. It's right here. Excellent light vest. Let's see. What does it say? Yeah, it says that it has excellent light vest, and I heard that it's really not great, so I don't know. Shadow Violet is PB29, PG18, and PO73. And that's what those look like. The next is Sodalite Genuine. It's a non pigment, it's um, genuine sodalite. Indigo, PB60, and PBK6, so pigment blue 60 and black 6. French Ultramarine is PB29, it's like my most used blue. Mayan Blue Genuine is so gorgeous, but it is not very light fast. Um, it is granulating, and it's supposedly genuine uh, Mayan. Um, Lunar Blue is stunning. Stunning, stunning, stunning. I don't know if you're really... At the granulation in this color. Holy cow. It is... Yeah, my, you know, on camera, especially in my dark room, it just, it doesn't do it any justice. It's so beautiful. Um, PB15 and PBK11. Phthalo Blue Red Shade is PB15. And that's what those look like. And then we have... Ma uh, manganese Blue Hue, PB15. Cerulean Blue Chromium. There's two different. There's Cerulean Blue and Cerulean Blue Chromium. I like this one better. It's PB36. Phthalo Blue Green Shade is PB15 colon 3. Phthalo Turquoise is PB15 and PG36. Cobalt Teal Blue is PG50. Ultramarine Turquoise, PB29, and PG7. And that's what those look like. Beautiful, beautiful. I love Cobalt Teal. So yummy. Greens. I have a few that I really dislike here. Okay. Amazonite Genuine is Genuine Amazonite. I love that color. I think it's beautiful. Jadeite Genuine is also a Permatec color. Pretty, pretty. Um, phthalo green yellow shade hate this color it's transparent and I do find it useful sometimes but I just don't like the color on its own hooker's green um, is four different pigments so PG36, PY3, PO48, PY150 so it's got green, yellow, orange and green and uh, a couple different yellow pigments orange and green in it 
Um, sap green is my favorite green that I own. Um, and not including the turquoise or anything like the actual green colors. I really love the sap green. It's very useful and pretty on its own. It also mixes really well. Um, PO48, PY150, and PG7. Serpentine Genuine is really pretty. Um, again, that's a Primatec color. So that's what these colors look like. Let's see if I can get them in the light a little bit. Alright, and then we have a couple more rows. Green Appetite Genuine is another Primatec color. Undersea Green is PB29, PO48, and PY150. That's a really nice green. And it kind of granulates into different colors. It's really nice. Um, green Gold, very bright. It's PY150, PY3, and PG36. Nickel Azo Yellow is PY150. Um, I replaced my, um, why can't I think right now? I don't know. I, I forgot what I was going to say. I'm sorry. Quinacridone Gold is PO48 and PY150, and Deep Quinacridone Gold is the same. Um, like, I obviously would not need these two on the palette. They're made out of the same exact pigments. They almost look identical. One's darker than the other. <laughs> Literally. But I do like the darker one. I would probably pick that. Uh, but, yeah, that's stuff I have to work out for my palette. Oops. Hitting my light. Um, so, yes. Definitely will be downsizing quite a bit in this these greens and such. But that's what these colors are. I really love quinacridone gold is so useful for mixing browns you can make gorgeous browns with quinacridone gold okay and then we have um, quinacridone sienna beautiful beautiful color it's PO48 PY150 PR209 pimentite genuine is stunning now in person it's like a pinkish brown if you can imagine that it's very pretty. It kind of reminds me of Potter's Pink, but like a darker Potter's Pink. Um, I don't even own a, a Potter's Pink, but I've seen quite a bit, you know, Potter's Pink. Um, but that's why I don't own it, is because I feel like this is kind of similar. So it's very pretty. I'm trying to put it up to the light that I have here. It's very, it's, it's, I'm looking through the lens here and it's not, yeah, it's way, way prettier in person. Let's see if I can get something different up here. Yeah colors are not showing very good through the camera guys raw umber is pbr7 sepia is pbr7 as well bloodstone genuine is another primatech hematite genuine is another primatech like blackish colors and then we have was that it was that it yeah that's that, i guess oh no there's two more and then i have um neutral tint which I forgot about, um, PBK6, PV19, and PB15. Neutral tint is really great for mixing shadows, and just literally you can mix it with any of your colors and dull them down a little bit with that color. Payne's Gray is beautiful, beautiful, and there's also a Payne's Blue Gray, which is on the Daniel Smith swatch chart I have, which we can see in a minute. Payne's Gray is PB29 and PBK9. And then I have a couple other colors here. These are not Daniel Smith, but these are the colors that I want to add. So I eventually want to get them in Daniel Smith. But for now, I have them in Windsor and Newton. Um, so, yeah, I don't have any information on them right now. So I just was going to say I really love, love, love this yellow. It's so beautiful. And I don't see a lot of people using Naples yellow a lot. Uh, well, not the people that I've been watching anyways, but I really love it. I think it'd be it's beautiful for flowers and stuff. It's really pretty. Okay, so there are some colors I really want to get. I want to get a nicer brown for a convenience mix. I love mixing browns. It's very fun, and they come out really rich when you mix them on your own. But sometimes you just need a little bit of a nice, rich umber. You know what I mean? At just a really nice um, burnt umber, which I don't... Ha I have a burnt umber, but it's a... This actually is my burnt umber, and I don't even think it was labeled as burnt umber from Royal Talons, and I just I don't love it. But it's a good stand-in for now. So, 
So I'll probably get, I think I want to get like a, a nice brown, like a burnt umber, but there's another brown that I think I'm going to order tomorrow. Uh, um, so maybe I'll, I'll do a spotlight on that one of these days. So as much as I love looking at all these paints sitting here, I'm going to move them. by paints. Aren't they so pretty though? I love having them in order for whatever reason. <laughs> it's like I don't even want to mess up the order, but we're going to, we're, we're going to do it. We're going to put them in here. And I have some extras in there so of the, some of the colors that I like. I remember one time I went to one of the art stores and they had these dirt cheap and I picked up as many as, I, as they had. It was not very many, but for me it was a ton, you know. They were like $2 a piece, which is crazy because one little tube like this on Amazon is, you know, $10 or $12. $12. It's crazy. I could never afford to buy all these you know, at once. I, it's like taken me years to get these, these paints. So, but wow, I feel so grateful that I have a whole bag full. So grateful because I really, really love them. Okay, so let's see what time it is. It's 26 minutes in. Let's just do the rest of this little swatch chart and yeah, I think that would be fun. So let me just show you what I already have on here. Um, I don't, hopefully you can see it good. It's, the thing is with my stupid camera here. I can't zoom in. It has a zoom in option, but when I push it, it says it's zoomed in, and then when I go to edit the video, it doesn't zoom in. So, yeah, I don't want to risk accidentally turning it off or anything. It just, it never zooms in. So I hope that you guys can see good and all of that. I will hold it up to the camera afterwards, so, and hopefully, yeah, that helps when I put the light like that. Then you can see the color a little better. So let's swatch them and then I'll hold it up. That's a good idea. Okay. So I'm just going to use whatever this little brush is right here. Let's see. Maybe I should use a small one. That's okay. I'm just going to use the Grace Art brush, this little cheap number eight flat. And let me grab a paper towel. I'll always keep paper towels. All right, guys, let's see. So this is just the 66 dot chart to try. Um, I just thought it would be relaxing to swatch a few colors on here. The first one is amethyst, which actually I already showed you. So I'm wondering if I should do all of them or if I should just do the ones I don't have. Let's do the ones I don't have. I already showed you amethyst and and um, sodalite. Well, you know what? Whatever. We'll do it. Why not? I'm wondering if you can even see me doing this. Because oh, I can't see it in my camera. Okay. Hopefully. I'm hoping you can see. Okay. I'm going to stop worrying about it. Sorry. <laughs> This is amethyst. It's a beautiful color. And I know there's like perfect ways to do the dot charts. I'm just putting the color on, guys. <laughs> Nothing fancy. And I, I'm trying to keep some of the dots intact, so maybe I could use them in my sketchbook. Oops. Look, I just squirted it everywhere. This is Sodalite Genuine, which I love. I have this color. Beautiful blue. The next one that's already swatched, this is Black Tourmaline Genuine. It's a, These are all Primatech colors up here. Um, this one is Bloodstone. I also have this color we just looked at. It was towards the end of the swatch. It's like a, a black gray. This is Blue Appetite Genuine. This is Bronzite Genuine. It's really sparkly in person. soak up some of that paint. The next one is Burnt Tiger's Eye Genuine. Right there. This is Diopside Genuine. Nice green. This gorgeous beauty here is Fuchsite Genuine and it is sparkly, sparkly. Let's see if I can lift up. You see the sparkle on that? I don't know if you can, but it is beautiful. Beautiful color. Um, the next one is Garn Garnet Genuine. 
Then we have Green Appetite Genuine, which again, I do own this color. I have most of the colors on this. Well, maybe not most, but a lot of these colors. Love this green. It's a very, very rich, beautiful green. The next one is Hematite Genuine, which I also have. It's like a grayish. We saw it on my chart. It's like a grayish black. It is harder to re-wet. Very granulating. Um, this is Hematite Violet Genuine. That sounds interesting. I'm quite curious here. Ooh. Wow, that's really pretty. Oh my goodness, it's like a... It's like black and brown and red and whoa. That is so interesting in person. It's gorgeous. The next one is Jadeite Genuine, which again, we swat I showed you that color. Nice green color, very pretty. The next one is I love this color and I have to get this for my collection because I love it. This is Kyanite Genuine and I could just see it for skies. It's got a sparkle to it. Again, this beautiful sparkle. Let's see if you can, it's not picking up, but it is sparkly. Take my word for it. And it, it's like the perfect moody sky. Um, I could totally see it being, um, yeah, like a moody sky color or a universe you know, painting like a stormy day or something. It's just beautiful. Lapis Lazuli Genuine. I had a really hard time wetting that. Like, I don't know. I didn't really care for it. But again, this is just a dot chart, so who knows. Mayan Blue Genuine is one of my favorite colors. It's so pretty. Beautiful blue. Uh, so pretty. Then we have Minnesota Pipestone Genuine is stunning. So pretty. It's like the perfect clay color. Like when you think of Arizona. <laughs> that's what I think of when I see that. Or, well, it's Minnesota, not Arizona. But that's what I think of. Think of like clay or sand dunes or something. Um, Pimatite Genuine is that beautiful, beautiful pinky brown color that I love. What is that? Mm, freaked me out. Okay. The next color is called Red Fuchsia Genuine, and it is super sparkly and pink and beautiful. Um, Serpentine Genuine is that gorgeous green. I feel like it's much brighter on this than it is on my palette, but... No, it is bright. Okay, never mind. They're right. <laughs> nice green color. Sicker Light Genuine is the next one, and that's like a brown. I had a hard time rewetting that as well. Sugar Light, or su I don't know how to say it, Sugar Light Genuine is a very pretty purple, and it's sparkly, very sparkly. I really like that one too. Zoocyte Genuine, it's like a green black color. Okay, now we're going to get into the quinacridones. So, the first one is quinacridone burnt orange. Oh my god, that is beautiful. Beautiful orange color. The next one is quinacridone burnt scarlet, and that is so beautiful right there. The next one is quinacridone deep gold which I showed you on my chart. After that we have Crinacridone Coral, which I also had on my chart. Beautiful color. This color mixes so good too with so many things. It's so, it's different. It's beautiful. It's a really nice warm red. Um, then we have Quinacridone fuchsia, that really bright pink color. Uh, Quinacridone gold, 
Next is quinacridone magenta, which I also have on my chart as well. Beautiful, beautiful purple. Then we have quinacridone pink, which I showed you as well. All these pretty much quinacridones right here I have, except I have the pink, the red, the magenta, the rose, and the violet. I don't have the quinacridone sienna. Did I? Is that quinacridone? Oh yeah, I do. I have all of these. So quinacridone sienna is really orange. So we'll swatch them real quick since we're here. So you can see them in action. So this is quinacridone pink. Beautiful. Then we have quinacridone red. They're so similar. The rose and the pink are very similar. The red is different, but the, the rose and the pink are pretty similar to me. I love the quinacridone red. It's so pretty. And then this is quinacridone rose. To me, I cannot tell the difference between quinacridone pink and quinacridone rose. When you have them swatched out, I kept mixing them up. So they are literally twinsies. <laughs> You definitely would not eat both. Heck no. Um, Conacridone Sienna is that real beautiful orangey color. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Again, this makes nice browns too. Um, Conacridone Violet. Really nice purple. Then we have quinacridone purple. Beautiful, beautiful purple. Then next to that is quinacridone lilac, which I feel like I didn't get enough out. There we go. Look at that color. Ooh, that's pretty. Then Cascade Green, that is a color I want. Even though I have a lot of greens, I know that this chart doesn't do it justice because I've seen it. I've looked it up on YouTube so many times, so many people have spotlighted this color, and it just, it separates into different colors, and it's just beautiful. Cascade Green. The next is Imperial Purple. which I thought I owned that. Is that one of mine? I don't know. Um, oops, I dried my brush too much, sorry. And then after that we have Wisteria, which I debated on getting, but I am going to mix that color myself if I need it. Um, because I looked it up what pig I looked up what pigments were in it, which I don't remember offhand, but I have the colors that are in it. So I think I was going to, I want to do a video where I mix all the colors that I want to own that I don't own, like Wisteria, Lavender. Let's see if we can match, if we can make those colors. Would you guys watch that? If anybody's even here watching me. <laughs> um, Burnt Sienna Light, Lavender, gorgeous. It's a really easy color to make. Um, Aussie Red Gold, I have not seen this color yet, so I'm excited to look at this. Ooh, wow. Whoa. That is beautiful. Oh my gosh. Look how rich that color is. The next is Payne's Blue Gray. Then we have Raw Sienna Light, which I feel like probably could get a little more color out of that. There we go. Beautiful. Then we have Rose Matter Permanent. Again, I feel like the quinacridone pinks, the quinacridone rose, and then this Rose Matter Permanent, they look the same to me. So, you know, what do I know? But they do. They look identical. In my eyes. <laughs> Very beautiful, though, all of them. Um, so that's a series two, that's a series two. That quinacridone pink is not rated as far as light fast goes, it says. Is that what that means? Um, 
I don't know. And then usually like series one is cheapest and then like the higher the series the more expensive they get. That's usually how it goes. So okay, lunar black I heard is a really like beautiful um traveling black, I guess you could say. I guess it moves around a lot. It's a very, very beautiful black. A lot of people don't use black. Um, yeah. I think it's very pretty. Okay, now let's get into the last... Um, I think there's like 17 or so, 18 colors left. I don't know. 9... 18 colors left. I have some black watercolor paper because I think these are um, different on black paper. I think so we'll look at that and then we'll be done I'm so glad you guys are here um, hanging out and celebrating World Water Watercolor Month with me I think after this video I'm going to do a, um, a review on the Paul Rubens watercolor notebook or, or um, sketchbook watercolor sketchbook and um, these really awesome black fine liner pens that I found that are mock-ups or cheaper versions of my favorite micron pens. So, I think I'm going to do that. Anybody interested in that? I think I'm going to go ahead and film that after. Okay, so the first one's iridescent gold, which doesn't look like much on white paper, and it seems to be very hard to wet. I don't know if it's just me, but I'm having a hard time wetting it. Let's do it on the black. Oh yeah, very pretty. Wow. Looks just like my homemade gold watercolor. <laughs> I'll show you that after. Um, then we have iridescent jade is next. Let's see how this wets. Oh yes, these colors are hard to wet, in my opinion. Wow. I mean, I'm like scrubbing it over here. Holy mackerel. So. Oh, wow. The jade is really pretty on black. There we go. So far, gold and jade. Time flies when you're having fun, doesn't it? <laughs> it really does. Okay, the next one, that's what we have so far, guys. See, they're really hard to re-wet. They don't look like much on white paper, that's for sure. The next one is iridescent sunstone. Again, with the wedding. Whew. I mean, I'm scrubbing it. Okay, let's see what I got here. Not much on white paper. It's another gold, I guess. Looks just like the other gold to me. So far, I'm not a huge fan of these. The next is Iridescent Ruby. Hopefully this one wets a little easier. Nope. <laughs> so far I'm not a huge fan of these iridescent colors at all. Let's see. Oh yeah, very nice on black paper. Pretty. Nice purpley pinkish color. I don't know. Hopefully you can see that. It's still kind of hard to see even on black. But it's it's pretty. Okay, um, the next is Iridescent Electric Blue. A little more pigment than the others. Let's see. On black. Oh yeah, very pretty. The next is Iridescent Sapphire. Oh 
oh man, it's like I can't even get any pigment off of it. Wow. It's another bluish, purplish. Very similar to the one before it. Oh, it's more purple. Um, they show up more when they're dry, so we'll let it dry. Go to the next page. Oh, okay, the next is Interference Blue. So those were iridescent colors. These are Interference colors. Hopefully we can see these a little better. Alright, this is Interference Blue. So it's going to be on black paper. It's going to show up. It's probably not going to show up on this at all. Oh yeah. Another milky, sparkly blue. Okay, Ear interference copper. These are so underwhelming to me. I'm so sorry. I feel like this is boring. Um, copper. I'm trying to go faster. <laughs> oh, I like that one. Interference copper. Then interference green is next. They put such a little tiny bit of this one on here. It's like barely there. Another green. Next we have lilac. Interference lilac. Oh, that one's pretty. Then interference red. We have sparkly red. Then I gotta scrub off to get anything. Sparkly red, very predictable here. And then duochrome emerald. Now we're in the duochromes, which are definitely supposed to be different on black paper. So that was those colors. Underwhelming to me, but you might like those. Alright, let's go to the last few. This is duochrome. Emerald, we only have a few more, two, four, six, seven more. Duochrome emerald, so it's green on the white paper here. And then on the black paper, it's green. So I don't know what duochrome means, but another green sparkly color. <laughs> I do kind of like it on white, it's very pretty. All right, um, duo. Saguaro green. I don't know if I said that right, but let's see. It looks interesting in the dot form anyways. Let's see. It's looking a little gold when you put it on white. And then on black, it's, ooh, it's like a serpentine color almost. A different shade of green, so that's cool. Next we have Duo Cactus Flower. I heard this was a really pretty color. Let's see. Very hard to wet these. That alone is frustrating to me. Okay. Oh yeah, Cactus Flower is pretty. It's another purpley color. It looks pink on the white paper and a little pinkish and purpley on the dark paper. Duochrome Hibiscus is next. Watch me struggle, these dots. Okay, so we have like a nice light pink on white. Very light color. And it's probably gonna be a real purple, yeah. And then, oh, I like the light pink that it makes on the white paper. It's really pretty, actually. It's just hard to wet. It's very light. And then it's like a darker purple. Pretty. I really like it on white. It's so light, though. Um, next is Dual Chrome Cabo Blue. This looks like a green and a blue. Now this one's showing up very pretty on, on um, white paper. 
I'm going to take it down. I want to see what it looks like here. And then on black, oh, it's so different on black. It's like a green gold. Wow. That one changes a lot. Pretty cool that it goes from that to that. Wow. I don't even know if I'm in frame. I probably should have checked that. Nope, I wasn't. Was I? Okay, I don't know. That's it in uh, up close, guys. I really like this light pink color. But they're so hard to re-wet. And then this is uh, what they look like on the dark paper. If you can see it, hopefully, there. Those two. And then the last two, and then we're done. <laughs> Sorry if that was underwhelming. I feel like it was. Um, my apologies. <laughs> I'm not a big fan of, the, of Daniel Smith's pearlescence and all that. I would seriously, if you want to get a sparkly color... I would, from just from what I've heard, I would go and get the Paul Rubens sparkle colors. Because by the time you pick up that many colors, you're spending way more than... I can't even wet this one. I mean, it's not even wetting. Literally. Okay. Pearlescent shimmer. It's probably just a clear shimmer. Yep. Kind of cool. Just looks like sparkles. And then the last one is pearlescent white. And I don't have any more room on that, so I'm going to turn this one over. I like the pearlescent shimmer. It's really nice. It gives just like a clear sparkle. But I still wouldn't buy it. <laughs> and then the pearlescent white is a nice clear sparkly sparkle okay so very underwhelmed with those last colors but <laughs> I do like I do like having this um, to check out some of the colors I I was eyeballing a couple I really like the Kyanite genuine I think that would be beautiful for skies although I love that fuchsia and how sparkly it is that's not a color I'd probably reach for I could see myself reaching for the Kyanite for sure um, I really like the sugar light too, but I probably again wouldn't reach for that much. I think I might, I think I might add that one to my collection down the road. And then the cascade green, I love the cascade green. Um, I I think I can make the wisteria and the lavender because I do love those colors, but I'm pretty sure I can make those really easily. Um, I could probably make the Cascade Green too, but I heard that the properties in it, it just acts different when you make it on your own um, than the tube. Um, let's see what else that I don't have that I like. Yeah, not this little chart, not many more because I have a lot of these. So, yep, this, so the Kyanite and the Cascade Green I really want to add to my collection, so... Anyways, that bronzite's really nice, too. I hope you guys enjoyed this little um, watercolor share, and I hope it was informative, and yeah, that you just had fun. And go create something in watercolor and post it to social media. Um, I have Instagram and Facebook. I don't do Facebook much. Both of them are just like my personal you know, they're just my personal accounts. I don't have like an art Instagram, but I do post if I make anything. Uh, usually I post it on there. And um, yeah, so I do have YouTube friends that are on my Instagram. So if you're interested, go check that out. Become friends with me. I would love to see what you create. So if you post your creations, um, your artwork and stuff like that, um, yeah, contact me and add me on Instagram. I would love to see what you make and what you create. So as always, you guys, stay creative, stay kind, stay yourselves because you're worth it. I love you all so much and thank you for joining me today. If you could hit that like button, um, the subscribe button, ding the bells, all those good things. It helps my little channel. I'm trying to grow my channel. I'm trying to make more content for you guys. Um, it's really in my heart. That's what I want to do. I've had a lot of roadblocks lately, especially this last year, and I'm just hoping that things are smoothed out now. We can do more art stuff, and yeah, it's what we're here for, right? <laughs> Thanks again. I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!